All right, here we go. Lesson number 39, difference of two squares, parallelogram proof, and the rhombus. We're going to skip the parallelogram proof because I know you don't really care about proving a parallelogram. So, yeah. Tomorrow. Work day like today? Tomorrow. Yeah. No. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's a test. Oh, yeah. So, difference of two squares. What is that equal to? Zero. If you have one square and you take the square away, you have zero squares. Okay, next lesson. So you have a circle. Lesson yeah. 40. Yeah. Square minus yeah. square equals circle. Wait, seriously? Square minus square equals circle. Are you serious? Okay, now Kendra? Lesson 40 now? I'm not going <laughs> to touch that one. So, so I don't understand that at all. Okay. 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 Anyway, back to uh, back to this lesson. In algebra, two squares are not squares. Okay. That's what I thought. Twos are squares. Ah. Uh, the difference of two squares. So if we take the difference of two numbers or letters. Or pumpkins, or whatever oh, we want. We don't actually need the square, square. Thing. No. That's that was just a joke. There's a difference of two squares in algebra. <laughs> Geometry, you'd have little four-sided um, quadrilaterals, equal sides, equal angles. <coughs> but in algebra, the square is the two. So, difference of two squares. When you're given these kind of things, what you do is you take the square root of each term. What's the square root of x squared? X. What's the square root of 3 squared? 3. three. That isn't so bad. Draw two parentheses. Put a plus in one, minus in the other. Doesn't matter which one has a plus, which one has a minus. First one, no. No. First one has a plus. Unless you're left-handed, then you can do it the other way around. Okay. If your mother is older than 47. If your mother is older than 47, you have to put the negative first. Okay. Then you put the square root of the first term, square root of the second term, and you be done. Okay. When, when you have two sets of parentheses, and each of the terms are the same, first term is an x, second term is a 3, and the sign of the second term is different, they're called conjugates. Conjugates will end up being very, very important bits of information down the road because it will help simplify equations later on. You don't really need to know much about it except what I just said. Um, we'll use conjugates later on when we want to get rid of denominators with radicals in them and, you know, kind of messy stuff. When you multiply two conjugates together, go ahead and do the FOIL method on x plus 3 and x minus 3 <laughs> and uh, see what happens there for me. What conjugation does is it eliminates your third term, it squares your second, it squares your last term, squares your first term with a minus sign in front of it. Okay, so again, later on, that will be very important as far as simplifying equations because you can make, if you had a problem like, like that, that's not very simplified. But if you multiply the top and the bottom by its conjugate, I'm actually multiplying it by what? One. One, so I'm not changing the value. But what happens here? What is the square root of seven times the square root of seven? Seven. Seven. X times X? X squared. That ends up being your denominator now, which is a lot easier than having square roots there. So later on, I guess, I'm not going to teach you because I just did, the uh, purpose of conjugates. It, sim it helps simplify right. equations. But then yeah. wouldn't your top be more complicated? Before x. We don't care. We're trying to get rid of that thing down on the bottom because you can't have a radical in the bottom. Oh, look at that. So, 
All right. So, if I give you something along the line of that there, um, your first question to yourself is, is that the difference of two squares? Yes. Okay. Difference means what? Subtraction. Subtraction. First point done. Can I take the square root of the first term? Yes. Can I take the square root of the second term? Yes, sir. Then it's a difference of two squares. So what is the square root of 4x squared? 4x plus 3. Okay. Plus, minus, what's the square root of 9? And you're done. Not, not a whole lot of um, scary stuff there. You have to just say it equals zero and stuff like that. Yes, you do, because we're not done with it at this point. Thank you, Madison. All right, so given, given that equation, and I call it an equation, why? There's an equal sign in there. What is that asking me to do? Solve for x. Have I solved for x? No. no. So I keep going. So let's put an equal zero here. And we learned this the other day. Any number times zero gives me what? What? Zero. So if I can make the value of this parenthesis zero, or the value of this parenthesis zero, Will that be a true statement? Yes, because the value of this turns into a zero times, we don't care what that is, it's going to give a zero. If this value is zero times whatever this is, we'll get zero. So in order to find x, we have to find a number, multiply by 2, and then subtract 3 equal to zero for this one. Then we'll know what number makes this whole black box here equal to zero. So we need to find what makes 2x3. We need to find what makes that zero. Once we find that, then that's one of our values of x. So we add x, or we add 3 to both sides, divide by 2. And in order for this to be equal to zero, if we put a 3 halves here, we should get 0. So 2 times 3 halves is 6 over 2, which is 3, minus 3 is 0, so that works. What did you do? I, get a three to both sides. I just put, where, for which one? Circle which one? this one? Three. I add 3 to both sides, and then divide it by 2 to isolate the x. And then all I have to do is put that in here and see if that, get, if that parenthesis is now 0. If it is, I did it right, Jess. Um, wouldn't x be 3 because 2 times 3 is? Six. Oh, no, sorry, never mind. My brain's working. Okay. Sounds like I got it is. It's Monday. I got only by six minus three. That's not going to work. Never mind. <laughs> All right. So, in order for this parenthesis to be zero, I had to put three halves in there for x. In order for this one to be zero, I do the same thing. away here. Okay, get rid of that 2, I divide, so x equals negative 3 halves. So if I take this answer and plug it in for this x, I should get 0. So I have two numbers, two answers, that will make that a true statement. Again, why do I have two answers? Because the number of the highest exponent is how many answers you have that. Okay, so bonus claps. What is that called? What is the highest exponent in an equation called? Alpha exponent. I have it. Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down over here. Oh, no, I didn't write it down. Was it in there? No. That would be the little number that goes in your square well, lesson line. I just said highest exponent. I don't know. I asked that question. Now I'll see if I can remember what it's called. Yeah, you said it days ago. Yeah. Um, That's English. A verb. 
high. It's a multi-word. It's the highest. The, um, oh, the degree of the equation. So the degree of the equation is the highest exponent in that equation. I was just about to say. So the number of answers is the degree of the equation. Okay, so. Whoa. 81. X squared minus 25 equals zero. I want you to find X for no. Yeah. No, not really. No. Okay. So parallelogram proof. Bottom of page 177. Some things we've already talked about. As far as a parallelogram is concerned, let's review some of the truths about parallelograms. We're skipping the proof part of it. <laughs> the sum of the opposite or the sides of the opposites are equal to each other. Yes. So, I'm going to take a parallelogram and the sums of the opposite side, or the, the sides opposite each other have equal lengths. What else did we say about parallelograms? The up and down sides equal 180. The up and down sides. Like one side, the right, both angles on the right. Adjacent sides equal 180. Um, the length of opposite sides are the same. Somebody had mentioned at one time about these diagonals. What did we say about diagonals? They, they bisect each, each other. Okay, that's all they do is bisect. Because notice this angle. And this angle are not the same, so they're not perpendicular bisectors. They don't form 90 degree angles when they bisect. They can, but they don't have to. Would it still be true that the opposite are the same? The opposite what? Angles. angles. Opposite angles are the same. No, I mean in the X. In the X. Like so, your top arc right there. Like this one? No, no, no. In, in the, the middle, where oh, you here? have those. Yeah, and then the blue one. Yeah. Are they Why the would they be the same? Because it's a straight line and stuff. Give me a good reason besides they're a straight line and stuff. Vertical. vertical angles are congruent. Opposite. That's what vertical is. They're congruent because of that. So yes, you're right. They are. And then the green and red would equal 180. How about this one and this one? They are equal. Why? Because they're because it's two close. Triangles. <gasps> Alternate, interior. Alternate interior oh. angles are congruent. Oh. Yes, Erica. It's two triangles. It's two triangles. Oh. No, it's two. Yeah. Anyways. How many triangles do you see up there? Four. 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 Six. six. No. Two. Two. <laughs> two. It's your question. Do you see six? No, I, I see, see two. Six. Honestly, I see two. Uh, I see eight. <laughs> I see it now. Okay. I see more than you see. There's too many. I see ten. There's too many to count. There's too many more. All right. Next part of this, let's continue to look at some quadrilaterals here. And uh, let's talk about this little buddy. Okay. He's called a rhombus. <laughs> Difference between a rhombus or the the a rhombus is a parallelogram, but it's a specific parallelogram. Just like a square, a square is a rectangle, but it's a special kind of rectangle. Rhombus is the same way. It's a parallelogram it's a with some particular characteristics. One is um, four sides have equal lengths. Just like a square. The diagonals of a rhombus <coughs> bisect each other. But you like being able to make straight lines. I do, it's pretty cool. And not only do the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, they are perpendicular bisectors, which means the four angles in the middle there are 90 degrees. So some additional information about a rhombus. And we won't go through all of the proofs. But uh, let me draw another one up here, just because I like to draw these guys. Because you can draw straight. 
Yeah, that's pretty close. Okay. And let's put some diagonals in here. The pen is just a little off. And let's call this E. F, G, and D. I'm going to call this little guy A degrees, this X degrees, this K, this B, and this C. And I'm going to tell you that this is 280 degrees. I understand that. Okay? 280. 280. Yeah, my uh, my eight doesn't really look very 80-ish, does it? Looks like it. There, is that better, Zach? That suits me better. Good. Glad I could help. All right, so what I'm interested in is you finding X, A, K, B, and C, given that bit of information. So, <laughs> let's look at this and uh, do it as a class. You'll have plenty of time to enjoy yourself doing this as homework, so don't be too discouraged. You will get to do these. I wonder if there's a faster way to do this. Okay. Um, one of the things, as far as a rhombus is concerned, I don't know, maybe, maybe I didn't even mention it. Let's see. Tell me if I did or not. That I said that these diagonals form perpendicular bisectors, mm -hmm. which means the angle of this is what? 90. So C equals 90. Did I also say that because it forms a perpendicular, or that not only does it form a perpendicular bisector, it also bisects this angle? So this measurement and this measurement are equal to each other. Did I say that? I didn't say it, but it makes sense. You already know because you're just so smart. I just know it's good. All right. So. Given that C is 90 degrees, does that help you find A? What do we need to find? Yes. Yeah. No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't do anything to me. Oh, let's see. 280 must be beneficial somehow because it's the only number I gave you. You know, it's 40 minus 280. Okay. And then it's in half, and then what's left? So Elias is just like tearing through this whole thing and figuring out that this is 40 and this is 40. How did you get that, Elias? <laughs> because 360 minus 280. Okay, so if he would have continued to circle, it would have been 360, which means this is 80 degrees. I need you to pay attention here. This is 80 degrees, and because Erica said that this is a angle bisector, X and A have to be the same. Well, if this is 80, then X has to be 40, and A has to be 40. Okay, so A is 40, and X is 40. How about K? Oh. Would X and A together and K and B equal 180? Well, it's a triangle there, and we know the angle at the top, which isn't mentioned, and we know that A. You know, that's 90. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's, that's 40. 90, that's 40. Okay, and Adam said K then is what? 50. Could it also be, could X and A and K and B equal 180 together? Because it's like half of the angles in the the thing together equals 360? Well, in a, in a uh, parallelogram, adjacent sides add up to 180, so yes. Okay. And then that would equal 100 and then half 100 is 50. So how, you found K is 50, so that means B is what? 50. And Yuri says C is 90. So not really a whole lot of math in order to figure that out. Wait, why did we need to know E, F, and G? That was just the name. Those of the are just the name <laughs> of the rhombus. <laughs> Wouldn't F equal A, though? So F would be 280. 
A. F equals A plus X. F is the inside angle. Because it's the exterior. F is here equals A plus X. No, the outside. Oh, it's the outside. Oh, that's a reflexive <laughs> angle, which is this. Yeah, so those it would be equal. So it would be equal to 80, and then you can yeah. find. No, you can. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> he subtracted 100, so it would be 260.